achieved. What is up, everybody, and welcome to Studio Day Heffrey, your home for everything. Everything? Everything. Man, you're like 10 seconds into this and you're screwing up speaking. You're home for everything Cowboys, as I'm knocking things over on my desk and making a bunch of sounds with silverware and just really off to a terrible start on a video, but that's okay. Earl Thomas to the Cowboys is a topic in. Let's talk about how realistic it might or might not be because there is more that goes into this than, hey, Earl Thomas is available. Go get him, Cowboys. But i got a practice report for you, and my reasoning for why the Earl Thomas thing to the Cowboys could make sense Let's just get on to everything that there is coming out of practice. Let's start with Earl, huh? I know this isn't technically a Cowboys practice thing, but we do have lots of stuff coming up here in this video. On Cheeto, he had a big day of practice today. Um, C.D. Lamb, what their defensive front is looking like. We got all sorts of goodness. But first, let's take a look at what our buddy Kyle Yeomans tweeted out on his practice notes. First one, sweet, Dak. Sweet, Trayvon Diggs. Sweet, left guard might have a new rookie option. I would imagine that means Tyler Biotish is getting some rookies, some get, getting some left guard snaps. God, I can't speak today. Defensive ends being expected to do more than rush the passer. That is something that their personnel says that that's going to happen, you know. Everson Griffin is a better run player than Robert Quinn was last year, and probably, yeah, he's a better run player than Robert Quinn's ever been. Uh, Alden Smith. I don't know exactly as a run player, but goodness gracious, the way he looks right now, he looks like an immovable object with athleticism to turn the corner. So I had heard, I forgot which player I heard say this, but I heard one of them saying the difference is, so with Rod Marinelli, what the Cowboys kind of did is they ran up field and hoped for the best in terms of disrupting the running game. The Cowboys are now going to be a team that is – you're playing the run on your way to the quarterback. And they got the personnel for it. Demarcus Lawrence is super powerful. Uh, Everson Griffin is super powerful. Don Terry Poe uh, is a better nose than anybody that you had last year. And we'll see what happens at the three technique. Uh, I will say it's a little bit troubling that I'm hearing basically nothing about Neville Gallimore in camp, which to me means that he's not having a great camp so far. Uh, that's the way I read those tea leaves. But you are hearing about Tristan Hill. So that's cool. Tristan Hill is a year younger than Neville Gallimore, by the way. He was a very young rookie in the NFL. Uh, but the bottom part of what Kyle said is what brings me to the Earl Thomas conversation. Safeties are interchangeable, like Mike McCarthy said. Now, this may be breaking news to you guys if you haven't seen it, but Michael Gelkin of the Morning News was saying that, you know, they signed Ha Ha Clinton Dix this offseason, and currently... He's not winning the starting strong safety job. Apparently, uh, Darian Thompson is having a better uh, training camp than Ha Ha Clinton Dix is. So the guy that you brought in to shore up that safety spot for the short term, it appears that uh, he ain't shoring up anything because he's not even earning the starting job right now. So with Earl Thomas, let's have the conversation, right? The conversation is this. We don't know. The problem is that we don't know. You're going to have a lot of sports opinions. What does Earl Thomas have left? I think enough to be a definitive upgrade for one year for you, and then who knows. But for one year, I think he's a definitive upgrade. Uh, I want to take you to a Tony Lombardi quote. I'm not familiar with Tony, but uh, my buddy Sean Sharif, who does the morning show here on 105.3 The Fan, says that this is a Raven source that he trusts. And he said, don't be intoxicated by the Earl Thomas, who was part of the Legion of Boom. He's not the same guy anymore. There's a reason a great organization like the Ravens let the guy walk. Don't fall in love with the past. Wake up to the now. And I agree with that. I think there is a part of that you got to recognize. Is Earl Thomas still playing at a Hall of Fame level? No, I don't think so. He did make the Pro Bowl last year for whatever that's worth. It is a lot of a reputation contest. But Earl Thomas, at least in coverage, is still a really good safety. Um, as a run defender, not what he was, uh, but he's still in coverage a really good player. So if you're talking about a defense where you want your guys to be interchangeable, I really like the idea of Xavier Woods and Earl Thomas together. Your question mark is going to be how good are you going to be tackling. But as far as being able to cover the other team's seam threats and work out what you're doing in coverage with tight ends and who's over the top, 
Xavier Woods and Earl Thomas, to me, is a really good safety duo. So what you got to do now as the Cowboys and as every other team is you got to get to the bottom of what the hell is going on with Earl Thomas. Where the Seahawks were ready to be done with him. The Ravens are willing to eat a ton of money because basically their entire leadership council of players is saying, get him out of here. We're not playing with him. You got to figure out what the hell is going on with Earl Thomas. If it's as simple as Earl Thomas didn't like it, they're like, why wouldn't you like it in Baltimore? They might be about to win a Super Bowl. That's an awesome team. Yet every player on that team that is considered a leader said, get Earl Thomas off our football team. I don't care what it does to our salary cap. Get him out. That's not a little thing. And I know that, but that's the way a lot of people are going to go is they're just going to go, get Earl Thomas. He's, re- he's good at football. Get Earl Thomas. He's good at football. And the Cowboys might. It's a love affair that's been going on for a while, and they may they may try to add him. Now, they're going to try to add him at the right price. Earl Thomas, at this point, has destroyed his market value. It's, it's incredible to have a team be willing to eat double-digit millions of dollars in a salary cap league to get rid of a Pro Bowl player. That's a lot. So you got to get to the bottom of it. They had to do this with Everson Griffin, where you got to work through, okay, let's talk about what's happened to you the last couple of years and who are you today, and that's something that the Cowboys are going to have to work through. What in the world happened to you in Baltimore? Earl Thomas didn't get released for punching a guy. People are punched in training camp literally every day. Every day. Now, I'm not saying by your team every day, but there's 32 teams in all the practice today. Somebody's getting punched. Now, you're not getting cut because yours landed cleanly. It's not happening at all but reports of either missed or being late to meetings and you gotta get to the bottom of it what in the world's going on with Earl Thomas Uh, with all that said yeah I'm interested because I think that he can help your football team on Sundays on the field now you got to figure out how much and is that worth whatever we think is a detriment of Earl Thomas coming to this team Now, next thing that I want to talk about from Cowboys practice today is C.D. Lamb. This is from John Mishota. C.D. targeted three times in red zone drills, caught touchdowns on all three, including an impressive toe tap in the front corner while being pushed out of bounds. There is not going to be a learning curve for C.D. Lamb. Like, could there be a learning curve for C.D. Lamb in terms of becoming uh, a premier route runner in the league? Sure. Is he going to become a better player as he's in the league longer? Yes. But C.D. Lamb's going to be a stud as a rookie because he has all the tools for it. He's in the right situation for it. He's got the biggest catch radius and the best hands on the team from day one. C.D. Lamb is going to be a problem. He's been a problem in every practice, and he's going to be a problem for teams in the NFL. The Cowboys are just so stacked on offense uh, that if anything goes wrong. Now, I will tell you this. They haven't been great on offense in camp. Because a lot of the plays that they're scoring touchdowns on wouldn't even be plays in real life because they would have been sacks. But that's because your top three offensive tackles are missing. So Everson Griffin, Alden Smith, Demarcus Lawrence, they're destroying practice because you're running out offensive tackles who shouldn't and won't play on Sundays. If they do, you're going to be like, oh, my God, how are we going to protect our quarterback? So that's a couple of things. Another one from uh, my buddy Dave Hellman. He said Jarwin had like a 60-yard touchdown today because the defense just forgot to cover him. Jarwin's going to benefit a lot. He's going to benefit. I know I've talked about the 3,000-yard receiver things, and I believe that's going to happen for the Cowboys. I really do. But it really doesn't matter. The point is that you have three bona fide weapons at wide receiver, and you've got a good pass-catching tight end in terms of working the seam and run after catch, and he will be ignored at times. Now, there is no coverage drawn up that says don't cover the tight end. But there will be enough attention going on the trio of wide receivers that Blake Jarwin's going to find himself in some nice spots this year. That is going to happen. Cheeto had his best day of camp so far. He had an interception. He had a pass defended. Now, I believe it was on the interception that uh, Cheeto hurt his right leg in some way. So we'll have to just kind of wait for an update. And when we get that, then the whole world will know uh, what's happening there. So that's kind of your update. Yeah, jumping pick of Dak to uh, Cedric Wilson is when he reportedly hurt his leg. That's from Todd Archer. And on that play, he was also sacked, by the way. But in practice, you just keep playing. You don't actually tackle the quarterback, so you get to keep playing. Oh, man, I hadn't even said today. Shout out to Luca. Goodness gracious. I love you, Luca. Go Mavs. Go Stars. I love you, Luca. All right, let me see. Hold on. Where's my laptop? I got to do some of the uh, questions from you guys, right? Got to hit up the mailbag. Oh, 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 hold on. I almost forgot to tell you. 
The Cowboys don't want people to report personnel groupings, so instead the people who are at practice are like dropping hints. And so here, let me piece the hints together for you. On third and long, the Cowboys are going to run Everson Griffin and Tank Lawrence at defensive end and Alden Smith and Tyrone Crawford at defensive tackle. That's going to happen. But nobody can tweet it in so few words because the Cowboys have told them not to. Don't worry. I'll do the research for you. I'll figure it out, and I'll tell you. Uh, and that'll be a fun pass rushing group. Go ahead and get Randy Gregory reinstated. You know what I'm saying? All right. From the people. Let's see here. Let me see here. There's that there. Troy Clark says 19 percenter. With the rumors, Earl may be released. Obviously, he has. Oh, yeah, and Tyron Smith. They redid his contract two days ago to free up over $6 million in cap space this year. Now, could they be doing that to give themselves a cushion in case they need to sign guys at any position? Yes, they could. But it's an interesting coincidence that the next day, Earl Thomas was released. And Gil Brandt was saying that he believes that the Cowboys knew Earl Thomas was going to be released. And that might be why they freed up the money. So the Earl Thomas train is absolutely alive. Uh, do you think the Cowboys are positioning themselves to make a run at Thomas? I, it's all going to depend on what people think about who Earl Thomas is. The football player is still Pro Bowl level-ish, kind of. The question's going to be the dude, and do you want him in the locker room and in, in the meeting room? That's how far his reputation seems to have fallen in the NFL in recent years. Uh, let me see here. Angel Noel Tiemis. Tiemis? Jeff, Clowney or Earl Thomas? How many ends that can kick in to rush the passer do I need? I'd love Clowney. Earl, he's going to cost very little. The league's going to be terrified of Earl Thomas. Baltimore eight like 10 plus, uh, I don't know, like $20 million to cut him. Come on, man. World's terrified of Earl Thomas right now. DeMarcus. Mofate. Hey, man. Been listening a long time. First time to comment. Michael Gallup's good, but what separates him from T. Will? I see Gallup fighting the football whenever he catches as Williams' body control made him a fluid catcher. Uh, from watching games, I think Williams is a good route runner and faster than Gallup. My question is, what makes Gallup better than Williams? Gallup's better than, um, than Terrence Williams. Was it literally everything? Maybe Terrence would win a foot race in a straight run, a straight line, but Michael Gallup is a better, more versatile route runner. Um, he did have drops last year, so I, I guess you could say you could argue against his hands at the moment. But I think over the course of his career, Gallup's not going to be thought of as a drop guy. He's good after the catch. Um, he's strong in contested catch situations. Gallup's a better player than T. Will. Get out of here. When did T. Will have a thousand yard year? Victor, can you do an honest assessment of Alden Smith, or is it too soon? It's too soon, but every report is incredibly positive. C.D. Lamb and Alden Smith, I think, are the guys that you hear the most positive, and probably Tank Lawrence, uh, as, as they're going through these practices. Those guys are the monsters. Alden Smith sounds like he is ready to rock and roll. Dean Julia, 19 percenter here, loud and proud. 19 percenters are those who have the notifications turned on at YouTube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh. I love my Tina's. What do you think would be a better strategy during drafting offensive tackles in the near future, knowing Tyron can still ball but has injury bugs? Drafting a first or second round stud or going fourth round or later in two drafts looking for high upside? I am not using a premium draft pick to try to replace Tyron Smith because Tyron Smith is still one of the three best left tackles in the NFL. No, and he's not old. You don't replace that. Do you want to have a good swing tackle in case he misses a game or two or three? Yeah, you'd like to have a competent swing tackle. But this ain't Jason Peters. I'm not drafting Andre Dillard in the first round because my left tackle is 37, 38 years old. Tyron ain't old, and Tyron ain't dropping off. Tyron is still awesome. So, no, I would never invest a premium pick to get ready to get rid of Tyron Smith, who's still got multiple, multiple years left on his deal at a good rate and is still a kick-ass left tackle. Nah. No premium picks. You want to throw third and fourth rounders and see if one of them develops to give you an awesome swing tackle? Cool. But chill out with all that. Uh, DVM wants to know if you think Worley will get some safety action at some point. He did a little in Oakland. Uh, maybe. I think that's one of the things they want is versatility. If you're not going to be one of my starting corners and it doesn't look like Daryl Worley is, then you could look at him over there, especially with the reports that ha-ha Clinton Dix is not looking good and not looking like he's going to earn a starting job on this team. But, again, just go ahead and sign Earl Thomas. Just go ahead and do it. You know, one year, $2 million with per-game bonuses, something like that. 
where if it looks like he's going to be a headache, you just out of there and don't worry about it. All right, leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow. Sorry I left you guys for a few days, but I needed it. That's the way the world works. Um, I love you. Bye.